So in the last lecture, Paul Cantor talked about uh, the, the economics of history in art, in visual art. In this fourth lecture, what he talks about is the economics and history in another kind of art, and that is music. So he mainly focuses on the Baroque and classical era of music and then dives a little bit into Romantic as well, but not, not quite as much. And Cantor believes that it was, it was no small coincidence that this art and music took off um, uh, around the same time in almost the exact same places. And these were in places that they were commercialized, but they weren't as much part of an, a, a national institution. So, for example, he talks about how in France, everything was centered in Paris. That's where, you know, where all the art was. And, and it was just, you know, there were there were just these certain things that had to be done to, to fit into that mold. And because of that, there wasn't the competition there. It was just it was just these, um, you know, the, these certain kinds of art, you know, the same kind of art, the same kind of music coming out of it. And, and just because it wasn't as competitive, there was only the one kind there. Whereas these other places, uh, like in Belgium, uh, mo what's modern day Belgium, uh, modern day Germany and, and modern day Italy, uh, had these cities that weren't uh, weren't part of uh, nation. A little bit of ignorant uh, ignorance on my part, I think, uh, going into it was uh, just my ignorance in, in history and geography is, like it, Italy, Germany, Belgium, n none of those were countries until actually after the United States became a country. Um, they, they all became countries later. The cities were there. You know, there was there was Antwerp and there was Venice and, and Rome, but the actual countries became countries later. So so a lot of this music and art came out of these places that that had these commercialized cities, but weren't as much part of this this national institution. So he thinks that's a, a big reason that that plays into a lot of the success that came from those places. So he talks about a lot of different composers in, in it. He mentions Vivaldi, Bach, Handel, um, uh, Haydn, Brahms, Mozart, Beethoven, Liszt, Shostakovich. Uh, he, he talks about a lot of different composers and it's it was really interesting for me to listen to because I grew up learning classical music. I, I learned piano from my, my sister. We, I learned a lot of the history from it, but even knowing some of the history, it was a lot of new stuff to me that we learned. So he, he, in the beginning, he talks a lot about Bach and how even Bach was, was more commercialized than I think we, we think of him as. We, uh, a lot of times, a lot of these composers, like he's talked about before, we think of them as these writers in an act, you know, writing their music or with their, their instrument only not involved in the world very much. Um, but, but Bach was, he talks about probably the best organist of his day. And he was very involved with church patronage. The church had hired him and, and he, because of that, he was basically, uh, they were having him write a cantata a week for the church uh, because that we have over 200 cantatas by Bach. Uh, so it was very much more commercialized. And then beyond that, he, he did stuff for the Prince. And then during his time, sheet music was coming out and Bach didn't do as much of teaching music, teaching uh, probably because he had 20 kids. <laughs> so he was too busy with them, but um, that was also a big thing around that time as well. So he mentions that e even Bach was probably one of the least commercialized composers and, and musicians at that time. But he was still very much in that world of, of commercialism. And then he, he dives into the kind of the next time period. Bach was more the Baroque. And then the next time period of classical was very commercialized. That's when kind of that subscription idea came. So in these concerts, they would sell tickets ahead of time to get people interested. And then sometimes these artists would decide whether they were going to perform or not based on how many people they had going. So uh, kind of that subscription thing came along. Uh, there was also, that was when sheet music was really taking off. So that's when it became more of this marketable idea to the masses instead of just uh, single performers and stuff because because when you think about it music in those days you couldn't record music and play it later if you wanted to hear music you either had to play it or you had to hire somebody to play it uh, you know there wasn't an ipod that you could just listen to music so th the idea that these incredible artists from history didn't care about money is uh, it was just simply wrong uh, thinking that they were just these poor people who only wanted to stick to their craft. A lot of them, yes, didn't care necessarily for the press pressures. You know, for instance, Bach, uh, he, I, he talks about not not wanting that pressure from the church of you know putting out these cantatas every week. But there's no denying the incredible works that came from some of that pressure. 
So uh, while these artists might not have as have appreciated as as much, and then you know even Beethoven in the end of his life kind of rebels against it, and and instead of composing stuff for the masses and stuff that everyone can consume, he creates after he's after he's deaf, he composes composes these pieces that are some of the most inc incredibly difficult pieces ever. Uh, like, uh, for instance, his 29th piano sonata is is still held to be one of the most complicated piano pieces ever. So he kind of rebelled away from going for the masses. But for most of his life, he did. Most of the artists in that time, uh, artists and, and musicians of that time, really did cater more towards that commercial living for, uh, for more of the money. Um, so... So it's, it's really interesting, even though these are these uh, musicians didn't always love having the commercial aspect, they definitely seem to take advantage of it, uh, even more so than we might believe or think of them having done it now.